Today we started the Legends of Chess finals and a very intriguing matchup between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomnici. If you don't know the, the history between these two players, Jan had a pretty decent score against Magnus. In fact, I think he was at some point undefeated in classical chess, so a lot of people thought he was a legitimate threat. Jan also brings a very exciting playing style to the board. This was game three. Let's see what happened. So the players jumped out to a Nidorf Sicilian. This also happened in the first game, and without spoiling too many surprises, Jan plays the move rook g1. The rarity of this move really is astounding. On move 6 in the Nidorf, there have been, according to my database, close to 400,000 games, and rook g1 is played in less than 0.2%. Okay? So just about one-tenth of 1% 1 of total games. The idea very simple, you sacrifice castling rights, but you'd like to play g4. b5, g4, bishop b7, and this crazy idea that Jan played in games one and three, daring black to take on e4. In game one, Magnus was too afraid to do it. And in game three, he seemingly did some homework with his team and took. And it was the last mistake he ever made because this game was astounding. Knight e4, bishop e4, a4. So obviously queen e2 is an idea. a4 played by Jan Nepomnici. Magnus responds with a central strike and let the computer preparation begin. A takes b5. Why is this knight not hanging? Spoiler, Magnus thought for a while and played bishop e7. But e takes d4, let me just give you a couple of computer lines. Queen d4, black can defend the bishop with d5 or queen e7. It's too dangerous to move the bishop back because of the maneuver rook g3, rook e3, and no one can guard your king because bishop e7 will be met with this move, devastating your territory. So if d5 were to be played, the same little maneuver, and you cannot play the move bishop c5, because if you do, I'm actually not even going to take that. Because the engine gives king e7 is better for black. Because the knight is covering all of these squares, excuse me. Astounding, right? Instead, I'm simply going to play queen d5, you can't take. If you take the rook, then I check you, king f8, and I simply pick up this bishop, and apparently here I have a huge advantage because of your weak king, and the fact that your rook is not actually playing in the game. Another interesting variation is the one with queen e7, and you have to play something like bishop d2, preventing queen b4 check, which would have simplified the queens. Knight d7, and rook takes a6, and something like this, where once again white is dominating the position. A ridiculous piece sacrifice for central control, and a very weak king on the other side of the board, so Magnus plays bishop e7. But now comes the thumbnail of the video. Rook g4. What? This move breaks every single principle. Magnus strikes back on b5. That's actually a very interesting move, disregarding this threat entirely. The rook opens up, so it's guarded, but this allows bishop b5, and here Magnus went for a long think. He can play king f8, after king f8, I'm going to give you another engine line. Takes, takes, knight b3. And here, if he tries to consolidate with g6 and simply safeguarding his king, a beautiful move, rook a4. And there's nowhere you can put this bishop. If you move the knight, I will take. And the queen cannot guard both pieces. So you need to move the bishop. If you move it somewhere to c6, like trying to trade, then takes, takes, queen d5. And I'm just never going to let you consolidate. I'm going to continuously attack your pieces. If queen d7, now I play knight c5. And you can't take. You play queen c7, I play knight e4. You finally get your king safe, boom! And, and so on and so forth, and I'm just constantly chipping away at your material. There's, a, there's other engine lines. My favorite is that if you play something like bishop b7, I can still chase you, and the computer here suggests the move bishop h1, and at that point, you know something is just wrong with computers and the way they understand the game of chess. So in the game he played knight d7, which is still a very dangerous move because you're pinning yourself. And we got bishop d2 anyway, because now the rook is guarded, this is still hanging, but that doesn't really matter. Bishop b7, now probably the most logical move. Here is the most human move of the entire game. You can actually pause if you'd like. Where would you move the knight on d4? Correct! You should move it toward the king! That is, I mean, the bishop used to cover that square, so we play knight f5, castles. And now, this is my favorite part of this game. Here the computer suggests a move that is so astounding. You can try to get five guesses, okay? I'll give you five guesses. 
And I'm not gonna say something like, you won't get it probably, because on the last video, some guy commented that he was very offended by when I said that the viewer will not find it. It discouraged him, and he threatened me to unsubscribe from my channel. So hi to you, and, well, hopefully you guys will figure it out. The computer move is Rook G A4. What? Let me show you. If the Rook takes, then Rook A4, and this Rook goes this way. And if... There's another threat here. There is another threat. The other threat is bishop, sorry, bishop a5. And there's just nowhere to put the queen. So for example, something like g6, bishop a5, queen e8, and you just take. And the bishops dominate the queen. The threat is bishop a5. Then you say, okay, well, Levy, that's great, but what if I don't take the rook? What if I play like knight b6? Okay, rook a8, bishop a8, bishop b4. And I'm threatening this and I'm breaking through again with my bishops. In the game, Jan took and then played rook h4, which was incorrect according to the computer, again, because of the move g6, but then here, apparently, queen g4 anyway. Knight c5, and it should be noted that at this point, Magnus had about a minute, okay? He had a minute on the clock versus 11. I'm going to give you another chance to figure out the only move in this position which wins for white according to the supercomputer. The only move. There's only one. Now, I'll, I'll spoil something before you try to think. In the game, we got queen h3, which according again to the uh, machine was not correct. What was correct here is to play the move king f1. Why? Because the idea is to go bishop a5, deflect the queen away from this bishop. But normally queen a5 would come with check. You say, Levy, well, what, what, why can't I take? Then queen h5 and mate. Okay, why can't I play h5? Because of a move that I will not spoil. Because it's what happened in the game. What if I play knight e6 and I consolidate? Nah, bishop a5 anyway. Queen a5, knight e7, king g7. And there's a beautiful checkmate. Rook sacrifice with queen to h6, and it's just over. That is why king f1 is the winning move. In the game, we got queen h3, which still makes a lot of sense, because he's going for the h7 square. h5 played by Magnus. White to play and win. I'll wait. Correct. If you haven't seen my chess tips video, you really should. It's the rule of plus two when it comes to attacking. You need two more attacking pieces then there are defending pieces of the king. In this position, there are zero. This doesn't really count because there's no way to prevent this. If rook e8, g6, queen, knight, three attacking pieces versus one empty king, and actually after knight e6 in the game, Magnus played knight e6 and just resigned because g6, and you cannot stop mate. If knight g5, I just take, and if this, this. Here there is one small thing to remember. Don't just take the knight. Check the king once. Force the king into a check, and then check and mate. That is how you would win this position. Boomerang. All right? If there's anything you'd like to learn from this video besides engine lines, boomerang technique. Check the king, force the king to the square you want it on, then go back and take on e6, okay? And Magnus played knight e6, and he resigned. An astounding game. I, 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 I simply cannot say anything else about it. Now, let me just quickly spoil the surprise for you. Obviously, h5 played by Magnus, but not the best. The best move was bishop takes g5. And here, the moves, according to the computer, are rook takes h7, bishop takes d2 check, king takes d2, queen g5 check, king c3. Again, the constant threat of mate cannot be overstated. Queen takes f5 loses to check. Here, check, here, and this rook is lost. And supposedly this king is safe. So you can't do that. So queen g5, king c3, knight e4 check. Forcing king b4. Allowing queen d2, king a3, queen a5, and bishop a4. And this is a draw. After the moves king, queen c4, and king to a3. You cannot go to the back rank because I will check you and check you and force off the queen. And you are just in a bad position there. And if you play king a1, then I'll happily take this with a check. So you actually have to repeat back and forth. Bishop b3 also loses to check. King b1, knight d2, king c1. I take, c takes b3, I get my rook, and it's actually you who is getting mated. 
I'm not really sure what the lesson from this game is. But what I will tell you is that this is the only game that Jan defeated Magnus Carlsen once again, the final position of which was Knight E6 and Resignation with the looming threat of G6. After this, they drew their fourth game and Magnus went on to win in the Blitz segment. But Jan Nepomnici came to fight. And in this game in particular, he trounced the world champion with some absolutely mind-boggling chess. So the question I have for you, if you're still watching, do you enjoy the role of computers in chess? Do you personally watch computer chess championships? What ideas do you potentially draw from computers? Even if you're a beginner, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts. Two videos are going to appear on the left-hand side, and I'll see you in the next game recap.